Recently, I had a brief but productive opportunity to use the Fujifilm X-T4. My time with the camera was short, so I was determined to make the most of it. And on top of that, I had four lenses, three of which were new to me to try out with the camera. The Fujifilm 50mm f1 and 100-400mm to f4.5-5.6, to and two Tokina lenses, each f1.4, 23mm, and 33mm. With a legitimate backpack full of Fujifilm gear in tow, it was time to spend a couple of days at the Grand Canyon. I am at the Grand Canyon. I'm a few miles down on the Bright Angel Trail, in case y'all are interested. I have brought two lenses today. I brought the Tokina 23 millimeter, but I also brought the Fuji 100 to 400. I kind of threw that in my bag at the last minute. And in fact, I've had that on the camera most of the time because I have run into a bunch of different wildlife. So I'm really glad that I uh, decided to toss that into my bag. If you're new here, hello, my name is Lee. I go to the Grand Canyon a lot. <laughs> I also share new videos on this channel every week on all things photography and about photography as a lifestyle. I always have a camera in my hand. <laughs> Subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. I also have long form courses on photography, things like the basics of photography, classic portraiture, and right now I'm working through a course on landscape photography. If you would like to see those courses, members have access to all of them. You can learn more about channel membership at the link in the description of this video. The X-T4 is truly and unmistakably a Fujifilm camera. APS-C sensor, modern vintage control scheme, fabulous image quality, Fujifilm's legendary film simulations, it's all there. Knowing that Two of the more notable features of the X-T4 are in-body image stabilization and increased battery life with a different battery than the X-T3. It was time to dig in and start capturing still photos and video. Those at home with Fujifilm cameras will note the dedicated dials for both ISO and shutter speed with aperture often on the lens, depending on the lens you're using. It's a similar scheme to my own X100V, although the X100V combines the ISO and shutter speed into a single dial. I reviewed the Fujifilm X-S10 when it launched late last year, which is similar in capability. However, that camera does not have the same control scheme and not quite the top tier specifications of the X-T4 in some areas. I know that many of you are cross shopping those two bodies, and I can say that they were both quite enjoyable to use. Now I do want to be clear on something. I have not come across a Fujifilm camera that has had all of the top specifications of its generation of cameras. For one, medium format offerings aside, Fujifilm spends its time and investment on APS-C sensors for both camera bodies and lenses, with the price of the APS-C sensor X-T4 being similar to some very capable full-frame offerings with the autofocus and tracking being good, but not quite top of the line, with the video capabilities again being good, but not unique, you may ask, why Fujifilm? In short, it's their fantastic user experience, the image quality that rivals the greats, and the Fujifilm and third-party lens collection that can keep you busy and creative for quite some time. Fujifilm's film simulations are another thing. They keep many people looking toward the latest camera releases. The X-T4 adds Eterna Bleach Bypass to the menus, which had Raymond absolutely ecstatic. I'll link to a video in the description where we discuss adding that and other film recipes to our X100V and other Fujifilm cameras. Fujifilm cameras are the ones that we are most likely to shoot JPEG only with. The simulations, which are a permanent part of your JPEG files, really scratch the itch when I want to shoot all day in just one or two styles and then come home and the images are done. They're fully baked. They are what they are. And that's not to say that you can't edit the JPEG images to an extent you can. I just typically don't. I enjoy that film-like process. Some days that can mean black and white, while on another day it might be a standard color film simulation and Yet another day it might be a film recipe that pushes the colors to the limit. But then there is of course the days when I want to switch over to RAW and spend a bit of time at the computer editing my images. When I am 
pushing the limits of the camera. The image stabilization was a super handy addition to the X-T series for the way that I shoot, which is usually handheld and often in low light for both photo and video. When you first start using a camera designed like this, it can appear to be more work, more complicated. There are more tangible controls than many cameras. But really, the camera is what you want it to be on any given day. I can be in the process, turning the dials and the aperture ring between shots, or I can set the camera so that it behaves more traditionally with command dials. I can lose myself in the day using film simulations, or I can switch over to RAW or 10-bit video and then spend time molding the photos and video to my liking in front of the computer. The Fuji cameras, the X-T4 in particular, allow you to get into the flow state of photography, whatever that may be for you, while still coming home with amazing images and video footage. It's this magical ability of Fujifilm cameras in general, which led us to the X100F and now the X100V with its simple fixed lens. But each time a new Fujifilm interchangeable camera body or lens release comes along, it really challenges Raymond's and my perceptions of our other gear because consistently, year over year, Fujifilm delivers their next iteration with their latest thinking without a full frame sensor, nor the absolute fastest, most amazing specifications. But the results and the experience using the cameras are so compelling that the line between best in class specifications and nearly the best is blurred. We start to wonder what is important to us in a camera. And because I answer so many questions from so many different people here on my channel, I've come to appreciate that the answer to the what is important to you question is slightly different for each photographer. But wrapping this up, after my short time with the camera, I had to send it back. And every time I have to do that, Raymond and I ask ourselves, maybe an X-Pro3, an X-S10, or the X-T4? It seems a crime not to have an interchangeable lens Fujifilm camera back there on the shelves alongside some of our other wonderful brands, but our X100V persists, <laughs> gives us that physical feedback and flow state with its own stellar results. So with that, what's on your mind? Have you spent time with Fujifilm gear with its full retro vintage vibe? Have you dipped your toe in like me with the X100 series or are you Fujifilm curious? Let me know down in the comments. That's also a great place to ask questions where I or the community out there can help you out. While you are headed down there, please give this video a like. It is a big help for the channel when you like and subscribe. Thank you to Fujifilm for the loaner and thank you for watching.